So my name is Jonathan Seekler. Um, I'm an Android engineer at Button in, in New York. Um, I was formerly at the Nerdery in Chicago. Um, <laughs> just, just to tell you a little bit about myself, um, I am obviously really interested in, in architect, <laughs> architecture components. Um, I've been following it basically since it's been um, announced at Google, Google I.O. Um, in the middle of last, in the middle of last, of last year. Um, in my free time, I like to work on IoT, um, IoT projects that, uh, like, um, around, um, specifically around Android, Android things. Um, but in general, if, if you guys have any questions about Button or, or the Nerdery, feel free to ask me questions and ask them. Um, I just have a couple questions uh, before we actually get started. Um, show of hands, um, how many people are familiar with Android development? Nice. <laughs> and how many people have heard or used um, the Android architecture components before? And how many people are familiar with um, Arch Java? Um, right. So I just want to um, tell you a little bit about Button um, before, before I actually started. Button is basically a set of mobile SDKs. Um, it essentially allow, allow, allows you to to link, um, link yourself with other with other applications such as um, Uber, um, Group, Groupon, Hotel Hotel.com, um, just and and the good thing about it is that when you actually implement it inside your application, you actually make some extra commission from it. Um, and on the next slide, I'm actually going to show you actually how it looks in the Foursquare app when you actually um, order order your Uber. And this is real quick for you all. Just a quick button. Just order an Uber. And you make commission just from that. But if you have any questions about Biden, you can um, connect to me after the presentation. All right. So Android architecture components. All right. So like I said earlier, Android architecture components it was announced last year um, at Google, at Google I/O. Um, and and just in general, um, I'm really excited for it because there's a lot of things that it actually just fi it fixes in, in general um, that probably a lot of you guys ran, ran into. Um, just in just in general, a lot of the examples that I'm that I'm gonna use, um, you'll you'll see like the issue the issues with just like doing it the kind of like the old way and being able to make like um, different components life life cycle aware so you don't actually have to work actually have to worry about it. It's kind of more of like just plug and play and then you'll have like lean lean activities and I'll be showing you guys how to actually um, implement them. But um, but for the people who don't know what um and their architecture components are. Um, there's five of them. Um, there's the first. The first one is lifecycle, um, which I'll actually be getting, I'll be getting into a lot more um, later. And then there's live data, which I'll also be getting into. Um, the remaining three, I'm actually not going to get um, get into today, but I will be using U model um, as an example. The, without getting into a lot of detail of U model, um, U model essentially allows allows you to keep. Um, Keep that in, in during like configuration changes when, um, when the actual activity is actually re re recreated. View model, um, the view model architecture component allows you to actually keep that instance of the actual view model. So you'll actually see it in one of my examples later. But that I think that's really kind of like all you really need to know about about um, view model without getting um, too specific. And then there's room, which is which is basically an an SQL light wrapper um, that basically uses. Um, annotations in order to actually do, do um, queries um, and automatically do a mapping to to just regular Gojo's. And you have paging. Um, it came out. Um, it, it was announced a few months after IO, um, but but it's basically a, a simple way to do pagin pagination with in, within your recycling views. All right. Um, just to give you an overview of just what we're going to talk about, I'll I'll be talking about lifecycle, um, what it is, and actually how to implement it. And also, and also live data, what it, what it is, how to implement it, and why, and why you should actually implement it. So starting off with with lifecycle, lifecycle in general is just a class that holds information about the state, <laughs> the states and states and events that's um, that's happening. So if you're familiar with the um, with the activity lifecycle, um, there's like the on create method, the um, the on the on start, the on the on resume, on pause. All all of those are different lifecycle methods, but the lifecycle. Um, architecture component um, essentially makes that a little bit a little bit easier when you're actually creating um, creating your components, and and in the actual boxes, those are those are actual states of, of what the actual lifecycle um, lifecycle could be. They're they're basically named 
exactly um, what, what you what you would think of with actual me with, uh, with actual methods and activity and, and, and the fragment and the offense is basically the change in the actual state. So when you go from like created to started, the the, the on start of that phase um, actually gets fired. Um, the two interfaces that you kind of have to just be aware of when 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 uh, referring to lifecycle is lifecycle owner and lifecycle observer. So a life cycle owner is basically anything that actually have, has a life cycle. So your activity, your fragment, your, serv your service, and life cycle observers basically could be any component that, that essentially obs observes the life cycle that actually cares about what, what state the actual um, life cycle owner is actually in and, and what events are actually um, fired. So I'm going to start with a really simple example. Um, this is my location activity class. Um, this is kind of just how prior to, to life cycle so prior to the life cycle um, architecture component, this is kind of just how like you'll have a pretty simple implementation of a, of a location monitor in your, in your activity. Um, so first we're gonna start by just extending the app compact um, activity. Then then in the actual on, on create, this is this is where we're actually gonna um, instantiate the location monitor a modern class and actually have a list a listener um, pass into a constructor update. So anytime the actual location updates, it'll just print out to the actual logger. Um, that your location is, and then it'll print out your actual location. And, yeah. <laughs> and then in the on start, um, we're actually just going to be just initial initializing it. Um, this is not, this is, this is this is not in every component that you'll probably think of, but for the specific um, example, I just um, included kind of like an initializer um, met, method inside of it. And then your on resume um, because that's that's the time it actually be um, visible to the actual user. That's when you actually want to start requesting location updates. Um, and then in your on pause, that's it. That's when you actually want to stop requesting um, location updates because it's actually not visible to um, visible to the user at that point. And just to get um, a little bit more into the location monitor class that that I was referring to on the pre on the previous um, slide, um, the reason why I want to show you exactly how the location monitor um, looks like is. Is because we're actually going to be making this life cycle aware. So this is the listen, this is the listener um, interface that, that I spoke about earlier, which is basically just a call just a callback. So whenever the actual location up updates, they'll, auto, they'll automatically just call all the location up, update. And then in the constructor, all oh, it's this is nothing fancy. It just uh, sets sets the listener to a um, to a member variable inside the location monitor. And then in the Init method. Instead of instead of actually me actually uh, connecting to the actual system service, I actually created a fake location manager, which kind of like mocks the the, the the system service where you actually get the real real location of the actual of the actual user. And from there, I'm actually setting the the location update listener. So whenever there's up, updates being done, it'll automatically send it to um, to the listener. And all start requesting lo um, location updates does all it does is actually starts the starts the system what would be the system service to actually um, basically keep request keep, keep requesting updates. And the same thing for stop. Stop um, will just stop the system service from doing it. So, so if we were to make it lifecycle aware, it'll, it'll kind of look like this. Uh, so first the first thing that you'll have to do uh, whenever you're going to um, actually make your components lifecycle aware is you're going to implement the life, the lifecycle owner, oh, sorry, lifecycle observer um, in interface because we, because by default the app compact um, activity as of uh, support library 26.1 it actually implements the lifecycle owner class. So if you're already using, if you're already extending that class, you don't have to worry about implementing it on the on activity for every, for everyone else who, who isn't extending the um, app compact activity or using um, 20 um, support library 26.1. I'll show you later exactly how you'll actually implement it. Um, but first thing you'll, you'll want to do with your component is implement the lifecycle observer. Okay, and I updated the constructor just a bit. Um, I just added another parameter, um, and it just takes in the actual lifecycle of, um, just takes the lifecycle object, and, I'll, and that's optional, and I'll show you why later, why it's actually optional. And the next thing we're going to do is actually just um, save the instance of the life of the life cycle to a member variable within within the actual location monitor, and we're going to also call um, add observer. And all all this it all it does is it takes a life cycle observer life cycle observer object, uh, and all all this does is basically allows the location monitor to actually observe the different states and states and events of the 
of the activity that's actually instantiating it. Okay, so so instead of instead of manually calling the different methods in the actual activity, um, there's actually annotations that you can actually that you can actually use. Um, it's called the on lifecycle event, uh, and they actually have an enum for basically every single method that you actually call on actual on actual activity. So it's on create on Oh, I'm sorry, on create, on start, on, res on, on resume, on pause, on, on stop, and on destroy. Um, and there's also on any, um, which, which basically, whenever there's any uh, different lifecycle event that happens, um, it'll, call, it'll call that me method. So, so I actually put the on start, so I annotated the actual init method um, with, with the on lifecycle event on start. So whenever, so essentially think of it as whatever on start is actually called on actual activity, it'll call, it'll call this method auto, automatically. And, and so on and so forth. Um, with, uh, with the start requesting, um, start requesting location updates method, whenever the on resume is actually called on the activity, it'll automatically call, call that method, will actually, which will actually start um, requesting the location updates. And inside of my init method, I actually updated it a little, a little bit so because we actually, this is this is kind of like the reason why I said the life cycle is kind of up, is kind of optional, um, because what you can do is depending depending on your your different use case, in, in my specific um, in my specific case, I wanted to I didn't want to actually send location updates to the actual um, activity unless it was actually in a resume state. So you can use the get current state method, and then you can use the is at least um, and give it the resume. Give it the resume value to make sure that the actual activity is actually in a resume state. So that's when you actually want to send um, location updates to it. Because if you if you kind of don't do that, depending on like the callback that you actually have um, on actual activity, if you're updating like the UI and stuff, stuff like that, and let's say on destroy, you're actually knowing out all, all your views, you'll get an MPE like immediately. Okay, and this is an updated version of how the location activity will actually look. Once you actually um, make the make the location monitor um, lifecycle aware, um, you don't have to override the on start anymore. You don't have to override the the on resume. You don't have to override um, on pause. This the, you have definitely a leaner activity. It makes it makes testability kind of a lot a lot easier because I don't know how many um, people actually try to test something that's on the actual activity. It's not fun. <laughs> um, it's a lot easier when you actually have separate um, separate components um, because you could definitely do just like regular JDD tests as opposed to just instrument instrumentation tests. Okay. And yeah, so and as I mentioned earlier, uh, passing in the life cycle is, is definitely is definitely optional. Um, if you didn't really care about like what the actual state of the actual use um, of the actual activity was in, um, you can actually just add, add it as an observer on, on the actual activity. Or you could do it in the constructor of the, of the location monitor. That's, that's more of just like whatever your, whatever your preference is at that, at that point. Okay, and so since Java 8 isn't mainstream yet, um, they actually do have um, a different way to actually implement, implement um, make, making your components like life cycle aware. Um, this is kind of just how like the actual implementation actually looks. There's only a few different there's only a few differences between Java the Java seven implementation and the Java eight. Um, you don't really have to worry about the Java eight one um, because it's not because it's not mainstream yet. But it's but it's good to it, but it's good to know because once it once it actually does, they're actually going to deprecate the on lifecycle event um, annotation. Um, the only diff the only difference is that instead of implementing the lifecycle observer. Um, interface, you just implement the default lifecycle observer in, um, interface. And instead of annotations, they actually have um, methods that you can actually use and, it, and they actually mimic all of the actual um, activity lifecycle method method names so you don't have to actually worry about like when, when is it actually going to um, be called, anything like that, because they're all the same on create, on, on start, on resume, on pause, on stop, and on, and on destroy. The only difference in between the annotation and these methods is there's actually no on any. Um, so if there was something that you wanted to do on using like the on the on any, you'll have to kind of like manually do it in each, in basically in each in each method. Um, and also because because of this, you actually do not have to pass in the lifecycle anymore because the actual method, the actual um, different method like the on start on on zone, they actually pass in lifecycle owner. You can actually get the lifecycle. You can get the lifecycle from 
from there. So if, so even if you still want to kind of like check the the life cycle state, you can actually just do it without actually having having to save the life cycle to the actual um, component. And it's just, just an updated version of the location of, of the location activity in, in Java. It, it essentially looks it essentially looks the same. Um, question? Oh yeah. So um, when these life cycle events are called on your other like location monitor, at that point is the uh, parent activity or fragment life cycle method completed? Like everything in that on start in the activity is guaranteed to be finished or is it like um, sorry, is um, that a question one more time? So if you have code and activity on start, mm -hmm. it, and then by the time your location monitor gets called in the life cycle event, mm -hmm. is it guaranteed that stuff in the on start and activity has finished? Um, what's the order of this? Like, does it get called I, after or does it, is it like asynchronous? Or? I believe it'll call everything. Um, so if you so if you add it as, as an observer, sorry, if you add it as an observer inside the on start, inside the on start, and let's just say if you have something in the on, in the on create, um, and the on start of the actual um, component, I, be I believe it does. I'm not 100 percent sure, so don't quote me on it. Um, I, be I believe it. I believe it does, um, because I wouldn't see a reason why 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 it shouldn't. Um, but it's it's also see the whether or not like the, the activities on create uh -huh. the life cycle function call before or after the the actual. Um, I think it's. I think it's after. It just should. It should be after. I don't. Yeah, I don't see why it should be. I don't, I don't think. I haven't actually typed. I haven't actually tested it. Um, tested that specific. That specific case, but I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it's after. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. And. Um, sorry. <laughs> okay. So just yeah, but just in general. Um, Making your components lifecycle aware, um, it, al it allows your activities to be a, to be a lot a lot leaner. Um, most of the times, you just have to just worry about just instantiating it and inside your on create. If, if you're using something like um, like DAG like DAG two for dependency injection, um, you don't even have to really wor worry about this. It's kind of just adding the observer adding the observer at, at, at that point. Um, the good thing about it, you don't have to worry about actually removing an, an, an observer. Um, it will automatically automatic take care of um, all of that, all of that for you. Um, so you don't actually have to. All you have to do is actually worry about is an observer. So one thing, one thing about just like just life cycle in general, um, just in general, like all of the like kind of like the, issue, the issues that a lot of um, engineers kind of going through was just like just managing the life cycle of like all these all these different components because. I mean, there'll, there'll be times where even if you use like I don't know, um, just a different SD, SDK for for a component um, that you that you've seen on GitHub, sometimes the documentation is good where it tells you you have to manage your lifecycle. But having stuff like like um, like 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 lifecycle, um, most developers who make who makes components, um, they don't actually have to worry worry about that anymore. It's kind of just like this is just kind of like just plug and play, and then they'll they'll actually just man, just manage your lifecycle on on their on their part. And all you have to do is just add it as an observer. Okay. Um, so, so for people who cannot extend um, at compact activity, or just cannot upgrade to 26, 20, the support library 26.1, or just use a, a totally different new architecture, um, what you can actually still make your um, make your views like um, be able to use lifecycle aware components. Um, the first thing um, is that you have to use the lifecycle registry class. Um, first thing you'll still have to do is implement the lifecycle owner, the lifecycle owner um, in interface. Then um, you'll just have to instantiate the actual, actual lifecycle registry. Um, it just takes a lifecycle owner into it, and you just override uh, the get lifecycle, the get lifecycle method, and all you have to do is just return the lifecycle registry. The only, the only like. Bad thing to this like just this approach is that you have to man you have to manually manage your life your life cycle so so here you kind of basically have to like mark mark your states uh, man manually like when you actually want 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 like created to be called uh, well when you actually want the created state to be set to be set uh, the started state and like just different just different events you'll have to make you have to manually call um, call those for more information on on when you actually should do it. On the developer.android.com website, if you actually go through architecture components, um, they actually have like some best practices listed listed under there. 
um, to how you can just, if you're just extending just like the regular activity on how you can actually actually make it like like that go away, essentially just like the at compact activity friction. Okay, so for that's life cycle. That's kind of just like my introduction to the next topic that we're we'll talking about, um, which is which is live beta. Um, live beta is is it is similar to ArcGIS behavior subject, um, and I'll explain why why later. Um, but essentially, what it is, it's a observable data holder class, and it actually it's actually life cycle aware. So so I, so the thing that I'm actually going to show you. Um, you'll you'll notice that we're we're not um, like difference between like using like a behavior subject and and using live data. Where when you're actually like subscribing to behavior subjects in our in our job, you actually have to unsubscribe from it, or you might or you might get um, events events coming through where your activity is actually not 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 created or there's no or there's no views, and then you'll just probably get like um, MPs MPs. Um, so it only up it only updates. It only updates to, to observers that, that are basically active. So you can essentially have a million observers on, on, a, live, on a live data instance, and it's not going to actually um, send updates to, um, to it unless it's, unless it's actually active. When um, an activity or a fragment or, or service is only con considered active when it's actually like visible, visible to the actual, actual user, um, and then when it's not, it's actually not considered active. And like I stated before, it's really similar to Arch Java behavior subjects. So if you're familiar or with behavior subjects, live beta is kind of like that, but without all the Rx stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're probably asking yourself why why should you use um, live beta? Well, first things first, um, no memory leaks. This is probably like my favorite thing about it. <laughs> um, the reason why it's no no memory leaks is because because it's life cycle because it's life cycle aware you don't actually have to wor worry about like uns unsubscribing from it or like remove removing the, um, an observer and it's never going to actually send you updates if your if your um, life cycle observer is um, sorry if your life cycle owner isn't considered um, like basically in a re it's not in a resumed state or an or an active state and it ensures that your UI matches your your, your data state. Um, this this all depends on like just how you actually set up like actually set up live data and actually and actually use it. Um, but but it, but in general, it's this is this is just a way that you can actually just ensure that your UI matches matches your data, um, especially during like configure configuration changes. Um, if you still have that same instance of the live data after the um, activity is actually created, it will, auto, it will automatically call the, which I'll show you later, the observe, the observe method and it'll update the UI just, just like you would even if you updated you, your UI, let's say five minutes after initially opening it. Um, no crashes due to stop activities. Um, kind of just like how, what I mentioned before about just, it's not gonna send data unless unless the actual acti activities, I still have activities wrong, but don't mind that. <laughs> um, it's not gonna actually send um, updates um, to, the, to an actual activity unless it's actually act, um, considered active. And no more manually lifecycle handling. Um, because it's lifecycle aware, you don't actually have to worry about managing, managing the actual life, life cycle of it. It's, it's pretty um, plug and play, and I'll actually show you um, how, to, how to implement it next. Um, it's always, it, it always has always up-to-date data, as long as you're actually calling like, the set value and post, the post value method of it, you don't have to, have to worry about actually lo lo losing data. And proper config, proper configuration changes, and share, and sharing resources. So, one thing you'll notice with live data, um, I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, you can have a million observers on. You can have one. You can have, you can have none. That's just all all up to you. Um, but just in general, like it will it will just be updated when you when you actually when whenever there's an actual active active observer. Only active observers is going to actually get the updates for it. So this is a this is a simple activity that I, cr I created called first name activity, um, and it will basically show you how to implement implement live data. Um, first thing first thing we start with is is by extending at at um, activity uh, mainly because it imp um, it implements the lifecycle owner interface by by default, and that's something that you that you do that you do need in order to actually use live data. And I'm also using Butterknife, um, and I'll show you why later. Uh, why I'm using why I'm using Butterknife, and I'm also using I'm, I'm also using the view model architecture um, component. 
the only thing you really need to worry about with the, with this specific line is that whenever whenever actual activity is recreated, I will get the same instance of the of the view model that I did that I did before. The only time that it's actually going to get destroyed is is when you actually just like actually finish the activity or go or go to, or go to another act go to another activity. But when it comes to actually like recreating the activity from um, from a configuration change, I'll still have the same the same instance of the actual view model. Okay, and so I have a view model class, which I'll actually go into detail about later. Um, but I, I have these two, I have these two accessor methods um, called first letter and first and first name. Um, they both return return live data, and the parameter I type for um, for them is is a, is a string. Um, in the actual observe method, the first the first parameter is it takes a lifecycle owner, and the second one is is the on on value change callback. That's actually on the on, on the interface, and all all this is doing is just printing out what the my first letter is, and then my first name is, and then whatever whatever I actually input it. And the next line, this is why why I was using butter knife is just for it's just for any time the text changes, it's calling set first set first name, and whatever you actually input um, into the actual edit to the actual edit text, it will automatically set it um, called set first set first, uh, sorry set first name. <laughs> and this is and this is um, just how my view model looks. Um, this is pretty this pretty small class, and but I'll be going through um, line by line about um, what everything is. So there's kind of like there's three total um, classes that you kind of have to worry about when whenever you're whenever you're dealing with live data. Um, the first the first one is the mutable live data class. Um, the only difference between the mutable live data and the actual regular live data class is the mutable live data actually has set value method and the post value method um, public. The, the, um, the regular live data, the regular live data one, I think it's private or sorry, it's, prote it's protected. Um, so you can't, so you can't use it. So you can't use it. Um, so you basically can't change the actual value of it unless unless it's actually a uh, mutable live data. So, but it's just um, just a regular differentiation of that. So. And on my second, on my second line, this is the first letter live data. So, for my specific um, act, like use case with, with this activity, I didn't want the user to kind of like enter in. I wanted to know what the user first name was and what the, what the first letter of their of their name was. Um, but instead of making the user enter enter that in twice, um, like their first name and the first letter first letter of their name, I'm actually using a transform um, transformation. Uh, there's actually a transform there's a transformation class that you can that you can use to, manip to manipulate um, just different things with with live with live data. Uh, there's only two methods on actual transformation class right now. It's map and, and switch map. The one that I'm using right now is is just right on that, and it actually takes a lot uh, takes a live data as its as its first parameter, and the actual the second parameter is just the, is just the callback for if any time the value of the first name live data ever changes. It'll run, it'll run that code right there, and that and it'll automatically set the value of the first first letter live data um, there. So in this well, in this case, once I get the first name, I'm just checking if the first name is empty. Um, if it if it isn't, then it'll just then it'll just set the value of the first letter live data to the to the first um, to first letter of their of their actual name. And for the set first name um, method that you've seen earlier, all it's doing is actually calling the set the set value. Uh, method on the on the mutable live data first name live first name live data. Um, so I mentioned earlier there there are two there are two methods you can basically set um, you can basically set the value of the actual mutable live data with the set value and post value. So the only difference kind of <laughs> the only difference between them is that whenever you're if you're doing something off of the UI thread, um, it would be in your best interest to call. To call post value, you can you can call you can call set value, but what happens is that whatever whatever um, activity or fragment is obser is is observing this this live data, if you're trying to update if you're trying to like set the text um, of of like a, a text view or off of off of the UI thread, you're going to get an exception imme immediately because you can because you cannot do that. Um, but if you call post post value. Um, if you if you update the live data um, using the post value method, I'll actually call the observe method back on the UI thread, so you don't actually have to wor worry about calling like get activity that run on UI thread and then just getting it getting it to um, getting it to basically um, 
update that way. You can just call post post value, and it'll do and it'll do the exact same thing. And I just have these two accessor methods that I mentioned earlier. Um, it's the first the first letter and in, in the first in the first name. It just returns the, the member variable that I created above. Okay. So that brings me on to my next thing is you're probably asking yourself how do you implement this to your existing project. Um, there's a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, so the example I'm actually going to show you is actually uh, one of my preferred um, methods. This is something actually um, actually actually seen on the actual Google Google website, but it might look familiar to some um, to some of you if you actually read the documentation of, of architecture components. But but say um, we had a simple stock app and I want to follow uh, I don't know uh, Google. Uh, this was kind of just like a class that you'll probably that you'll probably have. Um, it's just a it's just a simple um, stock manager class. It just has a inside the constructor you just um, pass in the actual symbol of whatever of whatever stock you're actually trying like you're actually trying to follow, and then it has a request price updates method on it that actually takes takes a listener, which I'll show you uh, the details of that later, and then it has a remove updates and it just you just pass in the listener and then it'll just stop sending updates to that listener. And this is exactly how our simple price listener actually looks like. Um, it only has one met one method on price change, and it's a, and it's a big decimal. And it'll just all it does is just return the actual price um, whenever we actually um, whenever it actually updates. So this is how this is kind of just how like the actual how it actually look uh, when you actually make when you actually transition from just your regular stock manager class to and just make it and just and just implementing it into live data and make, making that life cycle life cycle aware. So so this is kind of like a wrapper class um approach approach of it. It doesn't always have to it doesn't always have to do be this way. That's kind of just like up up to you. Um yeah this is really this is really up to you. Uh, first thing we're going to start is extending live data, and for the parameterized type, we're just going to do a big decimal um, because that's just what the what the call what the callback listener is. That's that's just the type of the actual um, price that the price that we're actually going to be getting for the actual stock. Um, then for my listener, I'm actually using a, a method a method reference um, for this. It's all all it does is um, as as a listener, it actually just sets the sets the value. Of whatever, or whatever the actual update is, the actual stock, um, stock live data class that we actually created, and then in our in our constructor, this is where we're actually gonna gonna create the actual stock map um, stock manager class, and we're just gonna save it to a to a, to a member variable um, in order to access it later. And then there's two there's two methods that you actually have to worry um, worry about when you actually extend the live the live data class is there's the on active um, is one. And all the unactive means is that this will this will be called when you at least have one active observer. And what one active observer is, so in terms of activity with fragments, whenever whenever it's actually visible, and when it's whenever it's actually visible to the actual user, um, it'll actually call this. So because you don't want to waste resources requesting price updates for for stock if the user actually isn't even on the screen any, isn't on the screen anymore. So unactive. Is, is the method that you just override. So when you actually want to start start requesting, we'll start requesting for these updates, and I'm just passing the, the listener that I um, created created earlier, and all it's doing is just setting the actual value of, of whatever the price is to the actual um, stock live data class. And then there's the on inactive. That's when you could have observers on it, but this is just when you have no active observer, no active observers on the actual like um, on the actual stock live data class. And it'll just remove, and it'll just basically stop, um, stop getting updates at that point. And this is kind of just an example of how your stock activity would actually um, look like. So in this, in this simple example, um, I, I, I don't know, I'll just push ETN for, for the symbol, and all I have to do is call the um, observe method, pass in, pass in this, which is the, um, the lifecycle owner. Um, which is implemented by at compat activity, and then whenever whenever the price changes, I can just update my my UI with whatever the um, whatever the stock whatever the stock price is at that point, and that's and that's all you actually have to do. Okay, so so me as a me as a just me as a, um as a developer in general, just working for a company that creates SDKs, I'm, I'm really excited for for lifecycles because it kind of just 
moves all because I feel like most of the issues that I that I that I've seen in, ge in general is just this um, just not being able to actually uh, handle the actual life cycle correct correctly, like just different, of different components. Some people, and some people just some developers are just getting get different different results for not for not hand, handling it correctly. So just being able to to kind of like move kind of like move kind of like the responsibility of who should who should handle the life the life cycle um, I think is really I think is really interesting uh, because I feel like the person who will probably understand how to actually manage it the best is the person who actually created the component um, as opposed to someone just implementing it. Uh, so so this is something that I'm just really exci um, excited about. Um, this is, um, yeah so today we went over what is life cycle um, and life and life data and actually how to actually how to actually implement it. Um, I didn't really get into the actual like, t um, testing testing part of it, but it's but uh, believe me, it's a lot easier to test this than just testing than just testing um, methods on actual activity on actual activity. Um, and and I just think in ge in general, uh, a lot of components that I. I probably like I don't know I don't know about you guys but when I was uh, when I was at the Nerdy I always you you like we'll definitely use like third we'll use like third party libraries and stuff like that and and I and I see a lot of these third party libraries probably becoming like more life more life cycle aware so it's gonna definitely be like an easier implementation kind of like how like with a stock library all you have to do is call observe pass in this and then whenever you, whenever there's an update you'll do whatever you need to do with with it um, so. Uh, that's the end. Um, any questions? Is that live data? Can you get it to work with the data binding framework as well? Um, yes. Um, I can't tell you off the top of my head. Um, so you cannot. So you cannot use it direct. So you can't use it directly on the, on on like the, on your XML, on your XML layout. But but you can but you can use it. I've I've seen people use it a couple like. I, I, I mean, in my opinion, I think they're kind of like funky hacks, but um, I, I feel like sooner or later they'll probably they'll probably I feel like phase out the the older kind of like observe like kind of like the observable uh, I forget the classes are the current predict yeah um, and just use live data instead. I feel like live data using live data directly in in your XML would be a better would be a better approach as as opposed to kind of like having like this kind of like weird in between of of just. You have your live data, then you have to update like your observable fields, and the observable fields is on the actual layout um, on on your XML layout. So, yeah, I, um, at the moment, without doing like fun, without doing like funky stuff, like there's not really like a way to use that. I wouldn't like to see you any code. Is that again? I wouldn't like to see you any code then. No, so. <laughs> no, I, I, it's it's better to just do it on the on activity. I'm not really a huge, huge advocate for um, data finding. Jonathan, question about the performance of components. So, uh, going just the I'm creating an activity that I'm used to, and then let's say I want to, I want that thing to create 50 components. Mm -hmm. uh, have you measured, or does anybody actually know the performance of how long is it going to take longer to paint my activity? Mm -hmm. Because now I'm uncreating 50 components that are lifecycle aware. Yeah. Do you, do you guys? Um, know I haven't. I haven't done any performance on it. Um, I haven't seen it. Honestly, that's actually a really good question. I haven't even seen anyone even question the performance of of, of live data. Um, I'm, um, I actually have my email on an, on the next slide. I, send me an email with the questions, and I'll I'll, I'll find out the I'll find out the answer for, um, for you. And any other questions? Okay. Um, well, my contact information is here. Feel free to um, contact me um, if you have any. If you need like the slides, I have no clue how um, how it's gonna work in terms of like um, actually give you guys a slide. But if you actually want the, want the slides, you can send me an email and I'll, and I'll send the slide. I'll send the slides over. Actually, another question. Please. So you say you work in like mobile SDKs. Right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, if I'm consuming your SDK and I say I'm the owner of activity, mm -hmm. right? I grab your AR or whatever format you're using. Mm -hmm. This activity that I created is not lifecycle aware. Are the components in your SDK going to get updated, or, uh, the, or are you uh, forcing the consumer of the app to also upgrade their code too? No. Um, so, so this is something actually we we're just talking. Um, we we're just talking about early, earlier this, this week. We'll probably we'll probably have both both approaches um, for people who still want to make want to make 
who, who kind of like isn't isn't up to date or they, they don't have like the life cycle where acti activities um will we'll still like keep both because there's nothing there's nothing extra you're kind of doing you're just annotating you're just annotating the actual cl actual class so if you're not calling like the ad, ad observe it doesn't it doesn't really matter um it'll still be it'll literally just be the same the same methods that that that's going to be called but you'll have but in your case if you're not if you're not um, up to date you'll just manually call it and for people who and for people who are they just they don't they just have to pass in the actual activity and then we can check well whether whether or not it's it's, it's actually like implementing that lifecycle owner class and then we'll just we'll just automatically add our component as an as an observer and then they'll and they'll just run all the all the methods um, as needed depending on the events that happen. Okay. That's that's interesting. Yeah, I don't think anyone will actually go one hundred percent life cycle life cycle aware mainly because it's so is this where Google's going? Like, is this the, the, the future? Are they gonna, you know? Kind of I mean, I, I hope I hope so because it, like I said, it, it doesn't it doesn't fix the issue of, of life cycle. It just moves it. Um, I, I I really I really hope so. I think this is a better approach than having I don't know on pauses that there are like ten lines of just you just stopping comp um, stopping component stopping component. Um, it's just kind of just like you have like your on your on create and then you're just adding them, adding an observer. And just adding it to adding it to the actual like life cycle, and then that's and then that and then that's it. So I, I really hope they don't they go this way. Um, I have no affiliation with Google. I hope I did, but I have absolutely no 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 clue. Oh, uh, but yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Right. Um, yeah. If you have any um, if you have any questions about um, the talk um, button, the nerd the nerdery. Um, feel, feel free. Um, could we could we talk to me? Um, yeah, that's that's it. <laughs> Good job.